Bush, the Fargo, North Dakota, to take on the Lady Bison of North Dakota State. After winning game one, the Mastodons lost games two, three, and four, thus losing the match three games to one. Tonight, it's the rematch, eight nights later, and this time it's North Dakota State that's come to Fort Wayne to take on IPFW in Summit League Volleyball Action. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Maas. Welcome to another edition of IPFW Women's Volleyball here on CATV. I'm joined by IPFW Men's Assistant Volleyball Coach Mark Franke, and Mark, IPFW made the long trip west last week. Now this week, it's North Dakota State that's coming east. Uh, travel evens out over the course of the year, and players get used to it. It does have some impact, there's no doubt about it, but you never know which nights it'll it'll come up and hurt you. And uh, Coach uh, Hartley Hutton said that she's not blaming last week's loss on that at all. Well, IPFW got a great performance out of Jessica Miller, career highs, 26 kills and, and 14 uh, digs, I believe. But uh, North Dakota State has a senior named Christy Stewie who had 26 kills against IUPUI last night. They have a couple good guns on the North Dakota State side of the net. IPFW has some. It'll be an interesting uh, matchup at the net. It's going to come down to how well IPFW handles the ball in the backcourt on serve receive and on defense. And I think the North Dakota State game plan is to serve tough to try to stop the offense at the pass level because that's the best time to do it. If there's one person in IPFW that has to have a great night, who is that uh, person? It's going to be a team effort. I don't think one player is going to make the difference. It has to be a good, solid team effort. Match number two between the Lady Feist of North Dakota State and the Mastodons of IPFW. Stay tuned. The starting lineups and the opening serve are coming up next right here on CA TV. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. IPFW. Yeah, North Dakota State and IPFW have had a good rivalry while the teams were independents the last three or four years. Now both in the Summit League and both powerhouses, hopefully to compete for a conference championship. But then there's South Dakota State, I have something to say about that too. Yes, indeed. Here are the starting lineups. First for North Dakota State on the outside, Kelly Lopez, a six-foot sophomore out of Glendon, Minnesota. Also on the outside is Brooke Vandenberg. She's a 5'10 freshman from DePuyer, Wisconsin. The center is Maddie Johnson. She's a 5'8 sophomore from Lakeville, Minnesota. The libero is Carrie Fagnan. She is a 5'7 senior from Fridley, Minnesota. Kristen Hilly is on the outside. She is a 5'9 junior from Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. Christy Stewie is the gal to watch. She's in the middle. She's a 6'2 senior from Hamburg, Minnesota. And on the outside is Nicole Sheridan. She's a 5'11 freshman from Muskego, Wisconsin. The head coach is Eric Hinterstocker in his second year. Assisted by Kerry Thompson and Leslie Kuhn. Now the starters for IPFW. Starting at the setter's position tonight is Shannon Ruder, 5'7 sophomore from Tiffin, Ohio. The libero is Peachy Jankowski, 5'8 senior from Fraser, Michigan. Patty Acevedo is on the outside. She's a 5'9 senior from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Rebecca Rehm is in the middle. Rebecca is a six foot sophomore from Wilshire, Ohio. Sonara Martin's back in the lineup. She is a 5'10 senior from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. 
Kylie Hervey will get the start on the outside. She's a six foot junior from Indianapolis. And also in the middle is Jessica Miller. Jessica, a 6'1 junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mike, uh, Jessica Miller is going to start opposite, and opposite. Kylie Hervey is going to start in the middle. Thank you, Mark, for that. The, uh, the, uh, ro the official roster from the beginning of the season had him in different positions for playing now. The head coach for IPFW in her ninth year is Kelly Hartley Hutton. The associate head coach is Steve Florio. And Bobby, uh, <laughs> the uh, graduate assistant, I should say, is Fabiana Souza. Our officials tonight, the up official will be Chuck Irby, and the down official will be Elizabeth McHugh, and we're ready to go. Both teams wearing primarily white jerseys. North Dakota State has uh, gold trim, green shorts, green numbers. IPFW has won the toss. They will serve first, and it'll be Shannon Reuter wearing the number one. And here we go. First point of the match. Rebecca Ream has her shot dug out. Kristen Hilly with a dink shot. Acevedo and it's blocked at the net by Christy Stewie. We play rally point scoring in women's volleyball to 30. Point scored on every serve. You have to win by two. FW has to get the ball over defensively. It's called a free ball opportunity for North Dakota State. Kristen Hilly and the block attempt by Jessica Miller is wide, and it's a quick 2-0 North Dakota State lead. This is kind of interesting. Christy uh, Stewie, who's a middle, is playing in a middle-type position, but she is starting opposite the setter, and I think they've probably done that in order to have her front row the entire time, the setter's in the back row. But she's running a, a middle offense and blocking middle. Jessica Miller's swing went wide, and it's a 3-0 Lady Bison advantage. We're just underway here at the Gate Center. Glad you could join us on CATV. And the Dons finally get the point. Rebecca Ream, the sophomore from Wilshire, Ohio, comes up with it. It's a nice gap set to Rebecca Ream. Instead of being tight to the setter, she moved away from the setter a little bit, trying to get between the two blockers. Jamie Schwartz out of Decatur, Indiana, comes in to serve. Where's the number 13? Dons going from left to right in your TV screen here in game one. What a good block by Miller at the net. And it's the second consecutive Mastodon point. 3-2 is our score. Schwartz with a conventional serve from the back line. Good dig by Jamie. Ruder going to set up Schwartz. That ball is dug out. Oh, nice dig by Ruder there. Three ball chance coming up for North Dakota State. Hilly off the hand of Jankowski, and it is a North Dakota State point. That was a long rally. Well, I wonder if Jankowski read a touch there, because I think that ball was sailing out of bounds, but she may have read a touch and knew she had to play the ball. Kerry Fagnan, the libero, will serve. Floats it over. Ruder right side for Miller, and that is dug out. Stewie has her shot dug out by Jankowski. Dink shot by Martins. Fagan with the dig, another long rally, and there's a double hit on North Dakota State. That uh, worked out for IPFW, but the last thing the IPFW coaching staff wants is a setter to handle the first ball, especially on a free ball. So that was kind of a mistake of being over anxious, I think. Rebecca Ream with a service ace just inside the line, and we're knotted up at four apiece. Reem, sophomore out of Wilshire, Ohio, with the jump serve. Dug out by Hilly. Vandenberg, Ruder with the dig. Sonara Martins on the left side, off the touch, off the hand of Vandenberg. And IPFW has their first lead of the night, 5-4. It's a nice shot by Martin. She kind of cut it back, and she had, to, she had to turn the wrist and the shoulder to make that come inside the block and still find the court. Service error by Rebecca Ream hit the top of the net and came backwards. The point and the serve go over to North Dakota State. We're tied 5-5, game one of our best of five match. Christy Stewie, the senior leader of this Lady Bison squad with the serve. Schwartz, that's dug out. Vandenberg, nice dig by P.T. Jankowski. Free ball chance coming up for North Dakota State. Johnson for Hilly, and that is dug out. 
Oh, oh nice play. Battle at the net, the open Ooh. spot. Vandenberg, really smart play there. The Lady Bison go back on top, six to five. Stewie from the back line. Miller off the touch. We're tied up again at 6-6. Six, six. I think that's a pretty good matchup for Miller. Vandenberg blocks at 5-10. Miller's 6-1 uh, according to the roster. Jessica out of Concordia Lutheran High School with the serve. Vandenberg just inside the line. It is now 7-6 North Dakota State. Christine Simon comes in the lineup for Jessica Miller. And Hilly will serve for North Dakota State. Kristen, a 5'9 junior from Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. Sonara Martins with a little change of pace shot. Nice to see Sonara back on the court, Mark. Yes, it is. I think we need to use her more against this. When the setter's blocking, uh, Johnson is only 5'8", so when Martin's out against Johnson, the, the Bison setter, they need to set her more on the pin, I think. The block attempt is wide. And coming away with the point for North Dakota State is Kelly Lopez. Back and forth we go. Lady Bison up 8-7. to seven. Brooke Vandenberg will serve. A little jump serve action there. Ruder setting up Acevedo in the center, but Patty's swing is wide. And North Dakota State has opened up a two-point lead, 9-7. to seven. Have a sub. Mayara Schindheim. Mayara Schlindwein. Schlindwein. We ought to be better with German names than that, shouldn't we, Mike? <laughs> we ought to be, but <laughs> here is Mayara. Oh, nice dig that time by Martins. Simon gets it over, and it's wide. That's Now, I think four straight sets that were well inside going to the left side hitter, what I thought would have probably been a hut or a go, meaning to the pin. So I don't know whether there's a miscommunication or just poor execution or what. North Dakota State on a three-point run. It's 10 to seven, Lady Bison. Ruder setting up Martins and, oh, that's dug out. Oh, nice play by Kylie Hervey. It's really important for IPFW to win the game at the net. Be aggressive on balls that are in the top of the net in the neutral zone, so to speak, or overpasses and so forth. And that was a nice play there. We need to have more of that on the IPFW side. I'm sure North Dakota State wants the same on theirs. Peachy Jankowski, the senior out of Fraser, Michigan, with the serve. And North Dakota State comes away with the point. 11-8 now is our score. Lady Bison on top. Danny Johnson, the setter, with the serve. And IBFW wins it at the net. Substitution, Jessica Miller back in for Simon. Shannon Ruder will serve for the second time for IPFW. Don's trailing by two. Here in game one of her best of five match. Nice take by Schlinvine. Rebecca Ream off Johnson's arm into the stands. It's always good on transition when uh, you've been defending the ball, your first player, your back row player handles it well so that the setter can run a middle offense on transition. Those are very hard to defend against, and they usually result in points. Just inside the line, nice swing that time by Kelby Lopez, the six-foot sophomore out of Glendon, Minnesota. Score now is 12 to 10 in favor of North Dakota State. And Lopez will serve. Deep into the backcourt. Ruder cross court to Schlinvine. Yes! Nice swing that time by Mayara Schlinvine. And now she'll get her chance to serve. 5'10 freshman out of Novo Petropolis in Brazil. What a connection down in Brazil. Stewie oh. off the fingertips of Martins. That was mistimed. I think Stewie was there too early. She held herself in the air long enough to be able to get a soft tip on the ball and took it off the block. Kerry Fagan will serve. North Dakota State up 13-11 here in game one. Ream off the fingertips of Hilly. And IPFW gets the point. You get the feeling this is like a heavyweight title fight, Mark. Back and forth we go. Well, that's another good matchup for us, Ream against Hilly. 
we've got several good matchups offensively. We just have to run the offense so that we can take advantage of those. Christy Stewie gets credit for the kill. She had 26 at tied her career high last night at IUPUI, a match that Lady Bison won three games to none. She now serves. Miller. Mark, I talked with Eric Hinterstocker, the head coach at North Dakota State, before the match, and he said one of the adjustments that they had to make eight days ago was finding a way to stop Jessica Miller, who had 17 of her 26 kills in the first two games. Jessica Miller certainly developed into a steady offensive uh, contributor this year. Last year, she had some very top-notch nights, but she had some where she wasn't as big a factor. And it appears to me that she's been more consistent this year in always being the offensive leader. Here is Miller. And it's long. So the point goes over to North Dakota State. And we have a timeout on the floor. 15-14, game one. You're watching IPFW Women's Volleyball on CATV. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center, along with Mark Franke. I'm Mike Moss. We're in game one of our best of five match between IPFW and North Dakota State. <laughs> An historic match, Mark, and the fact that it's the first match in Summit League competition by any IPFW team. No, neither the soccer teams or cross they, they country? Have, they have not started conference play yet. Wow. It is 15-14 North Dakota State. Kristen Hilly will serve for the Lady Bison. We'll have to get back to soccer. They had a big win the other night, didn't they? Yes, they did. Win soccer. Maddie Johnson setting up Brooke Vandenberg, and Vandenberg plants it between Christine Simon and Peachy Jankowski. Both teams are conceding the back line, it seems like, whether the defense are just porous right now or whether they're playing too, too tight. I'm not sure, but both teams are conceding deep in the court. North Dakota State continues to serve. Martins on the left side, and that is a tag team blocked at the net. Sonar's going to try it again. Oh, nice. Oh, the, the idea was good, but the shot was a little bit wide. That's a difficult one to execute. You're right. The idea was good. That court was wide open, but it's very difficult to execute that. Three points in a row now scored by North Dakota State. They're up 17-14. Going back to Sonara Martins. Yes. There's a senior on a nice set from Shannon Reuter. Brings IPFW to within two at 17-15. And now she Lopez will blocking middle for North Dakota State there. It's interesting what they're doing blocking because they have their players out of the natural positions, probably for offensive reasons. Lopez is blocked. They're just adapting on defense for blocking. Jankowski with the dig. Schlinvine, and that's taken out. Hervey. Back we go. Hilly with a nice dig. Johnson setting up Stewie. Change of pace shot, and Reuter digs it out. Shannon going to go offensive. Vandenberg with the dig. And finally, North Dakota State, Lopez gets the point. Another long rally. And it wasn't played particularly well by either offense, but IPFW's uh, probably decision making there was a little worse than North Dakota State's there. Brooke Vandenberg with a jump serve. Schlinvine, and that's partially blocked. Corner Short again. set, and that time Nicole Sheridan gets her first kill. Timeout called by IPFW. They are trailing 19-15. For tickets to IPFW athletic events, call 481-6000, or you can go to the IPFW website. It's gomastodons.com. Mastodon's tickets are available for individual events or a mini season package as well. Again, the phone number 481 6000. Online, go to gomastodons.com. Now, take a look at the numbers, Mark. North Dakota State hitting 385, IPFW 182. 
11, uh, 1 and 26. That's 11 kills, one error in 26 attempts from North, North Dakota State. You hold yourself to one error, you're going to have the top score on the scoreboard. IPFW, five errors out of 33 attempts. It's still 11 kills, but those five errors took away uh, five of the kills, in essence. Each team with 11 kills. Assists right now favor North Dakota State 11 to 10. Digs favor IPFW. Not take that back. Digs favor North Dakota State 14 13. And so do blocks. And IPFW normally wants to win that blocking matchup. Now back we go. Brooke Vandenberg. She's a 5 10 freshman out of De Pere, Wisconsin. With the serve. Ruder setting up Martins. And that is dug out by Sheridan. We go back to Lopez. Oh, they like to go to Kelly Lopez on the left side. Plus, she's matched up against Shannon Reuter, so that that hitter to blocker advantage I was talking about on the IPFW side reversed itself there. So she went over Reuter, and, and Martins couldn't make the play out of middle back. And there's also that five-inch size differential as well. Schlinvine is blocked at the net. Reuter going to go right side to Hervey, and that is dug out. Lopez again, and it's wide. IPFW gets the point and stops the bleeding for the moment. 20 to 16 think, is our score. I think uh, Sonara Martins is complaining uh, maybe about screening during the serve. I'm not sure. She just said something to uh, Chuck Irby. Peachy Jankowski was served. Don's going from left to right in your TV screen. Serve is long. Service error. And it's now 21-16 Lady Bison. Maddie Johnson, a 5'8 sophomore out of Lakeville, Minnesota. She was a setter last year as a freshman for this Lady Bison team. Hey, Shannon Ruder off duels. Stewie at the net. Talk about David and Goliath. Sometimes David can beat Goliath on a joust like that, provided they go up at just the right time and, and they go up strong with their upper body. And if they catch the other person at a weak moment, they can win it. Stewie at 6'2 and Ruder at 5-7, and that time Sh uh, Sheridan will get credit for the kill with Miller unable to control the block. She blocked straight up vertically rather than taking her arms in and over. She knew that when she turned around. You can see it on her face. Kelly Lopez with the service airs. Her jump serve went into the net. That helps the IPFW calls. Don's down now by 4, 22-18, and here is Mayara Schlinvine to serve. Off of Hilly's hand. Does Lopez oh. save it? No. Good effort by Lopez, but a nice serve by Schlinman. Green was up. That ball may have cleared the net. It looked like it's going to be very close, so Reem went up, but it never made it. It's now 22 19. IPFW down by three, but continuing to serve. That one just got over the net. Johnson for Hilly. Dug out by Jankowski, but it went off the hands and dead right. And a teammate could not catch up to it. I think she expected it to come harder than it did or something. I'm, she just, just, by the way, she, she had her body when that shot came to her. Kerry Fagnon will serve. Ruder setting up Miller. And that is dug out by Stewie. Vandenberg, and that's kept alive by IPFW. Free ball chance, oh. Good effort. Can they finish it? No. Yes. Yes, they can. Oh, Stewie got the fortuitous break off the top of the net. Oh, that wasn't fortuitous. That was good aggressive play by Stewie. She gets all the credit for that one. That's what Rebecca Ream was trying to do on the last play, but it never came across. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready for that because it's an easy point. It's now a five-point Lady Bison advantage, 24-19. Miller from the right side, and that is kept alive. Double hit, however. I believe caught on Brick Vandenberg. Well, IPFW got the break there, Mark. Now they've got to put a rally together. They're down four, and it's getting the latter stages of game one. Aggressive serving helps. Rebecca Roon with the serve, but that uh, the, it was that a combination play, wasn't it? Looked it. To Hilly. Did Hilly hit that? Yes. Yeah, she, she came in what would be called the two position. I think she came behind the middle. There's a second option there. Christy Stewie serving for North Dakota State. They're up by five. Hervey wins the joust over Johnson in the middle of the net. Don's back to within four at 25 21. 
Jessica Miller with the serve. And off the touch, North Dakota State gets the yeah, point. Another timeout coming, Mike. Timeout called by Kelly Hartley Hutton of IPFW. That's her second and final allotted timeout. Okay, Mark, you're in the coaching business on the men's side. What is Kelly saying to the squad right now? Well, there are a number of things they need to do. Uh, for one thing, I think that they can adjust fairly easily, or they should be able to. It's all easy theoretically. Is they're blocking it, particularly on the right side. It's going up vertically, and it's not penetrating across the net. So you see a lot of, of, of shots from the left side of North Dakota State going out of bounds off our block. That's because they're not pressing in and over, get their hands turned, go out to the antenna, get reach over and turn in rather than go up straight. So I think that's something that needs to be fixed in a hurry to, in order to take away that left side offense. Now, hurry is the optimum word. IPSW trailing 26-21, and this is a game to 30, win by two. Jessica Dominiak has come onto the floor. She has been the starting setter most of the season for IPFW. So she replaces Shannon Reuter. And Christine Simon back on the floor, replacing Jessica Miller. The RPFW offense has been out of sync, and I think uh, probably Coach Hutton decided a change in setter may, may correct that. Kristen Hilly will serve for North Dakota State. Again, Lady Bison up 26-21 here in game one. Deep serve into the backcourt. Free ball chance coming up for Lady Bison. Johnson for Vandenberg. Boy, what a rocket that was off of first Martins and then Simon in North Dakota State comes away with the point. She came inside the block that time, so that was a nice shot. That was Lopez, right? Yes. Tilly continues to serve. Dominiac setting up Sonara Martins. Yes! Well, it's nice to get your first uh, assist and your first set. Well, she set over, over the... Uh, the 5'10 or 5'8 setter, mm -hmm. setter on the on the Bison side, which is what I said earlier that we need to do more of. Lopez, wow. She likes to swing and she likes to go deep into the backcourt and she comes away with another kill. She's really strong. That's her sixth kill here in game one. 28-22 North Dakota State. Vandenberg with the jump serve. Hervey from the right side. Hilly tries to save it. Dons with a free ball opportunity. Dominiac, Schlinvine, change of pace. That's set to drop inside again, and, and uh, Mayara came in and then played, ran a tip rather than try to swing into the block. That's a smart play. You typically don't see that out of a freshman. Jump serve into the net by P.G. Jankowski. Not what the Dons needed because now North Dakota State has a game point. Critical service error there. Johnson serving for game one. Well, Rebecca Reem says not so fast. Rebecca picks up her fifth kill here in game number one. Jessica Dominiak with her first serve of the night. And it's into the net, and that gives, that service error gives North Dakota State game one by a score of 30 to 24. So the Lady Bison up one game to none in our match. We'll take a timeout, get ready for game two. You're watching IPFW Women's Volleyball on CATV. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. <laughs> Pizza! Pizza! Uh, oh, must eat! Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum? Agaricus Bisporus? Huh? Allium Sepa? Can we eat it? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man! Honey! 
Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When you went to college, did you know what you were going to major in before you started classes? When you graduated, did you already know what your career path would be? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll find out how students pick majors and career paths with both academic advisors and career counselors. We'll also highlight a new master's degree in education with a major in special education. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW. Along with Mark Franke, I'm Mike Moss. Game one of our best of five match between IPFW and North Dakota State in the books. And the Lady Bison came out on top, 30 to 24. Looks like we're honoring the Dean's List tonight. Those are the, uh, that's the honor program. <laughs> I recognize some of them. They're always in the library studying, I think. Ah. Yeah, it was dressed appropriately. Dressed appropriately, yeah. The, uh, the, the only statistical difference was offensively where there's a plus five for uh, North Dakota State, but I think there was a big difference in the way the offenses were run. Well, that, of course, showed in the, uh, the offensive statistics. But what was, I think, hurting on the IPFW offensive side is we were not taking advantage of hitter, blocker, mismatches. Big hitter, smaller blocker, we didn't set it, or we didn't take him out to the pin. We let it drop inside so the middle blocker could come in and help. Uh, towards the end of this, the set there, North Dakota State was doing a much better job of that. We saw Lopez mm -hmm. go out over against uh, the IPFW setter, of course, is shorter. Either, either of them were shorter and get a number of kills at the end. Well, North Dakota State hit 457 in game one, IPFW 244. Kelly Lopez, as you mentioned, she had six kills for the Lady Bison. Rebecca Ream had five for the Mastodons. IPFW needs to be more aggressive on serving. You know, there wasn't bad three aces, four errors. Not bad but uh, didn't score a lot of points off the serve. And the other thing is, uh, at the blocking, at the net, normally we're a very aggressive blocking team. We weren't real effective, only two blocks the entire set. Maddie Jensen, 5'8", sophomore out of Lakeville, Minnesota, will serve for North Dakota State. Game two is underway, and Sonara Martins is long and strong, and the Lady Bison get point number one. She was calling for a touch, but she wasn't gonna get it. Maddie Johnson. Played every game last year as a freshman. Lady Bison were 17 and 13 in 2006. And Christy Stewie gets a block at the net. That was set up well by the Bisons. They saw that play develop and they got out there knowing that she would have to cut it back when she ran that backslide. Little jump serve for Johnson. Dominiac left side to Martins. Just long and it is a 3-0 North Dakota State lead. They led 3-0 in game one. I was thinking, Mark, looking at the score sheet from last Friday, we could go yesterday. IPFW won game one, and then North Dakota State won games two, three, and four. Nice dig by Johnson there. Lopez over to Sheridan. That is dug out by Jamie Schwartz. And a missed John. Time jump by Taryn Parker. Results in another North Dakota State point. And you wonder how long Kelly Hartley Hutton will go before she calls a timeout. Johnson with the serve. Dominiac for Sonara Martins. Nice dig by Hilly. Free ball chance coming up for IPFW. Dominiac for Jessica Miller. Yes. Badly needed point for IPFW. And they caught the tape, or the hit caught the tape, and so the defense was flat-footed, thinking it was going to come across sharp. Oh, service error by Miller. That's the fifth team service error tonight. First here in game number two. 5-1 Lady Bison, Kelly Lopez, who we noted between games, Mark, was a red shirt last year, did not play in 06. Stewie setting up Kristen Hilly. That's dug out by Christine Simon. Parker on a short set from Dominiac. It's a Mastodon point. Two things that have impressed me about North Dakota State here late in game one, now early in game two. First of all, they're doing a better job of back row ball handling. But the other thing is they're they're running down balls. And they're keeping things in play. They're, they're giving the next ball handler a chance at it. Martins with a dig. Schlinvine, and yes. Unsuccessful block attempt by Sheridan. That's what I was talking about, IPFW going up vertically. 
and the ball will come down on either come down on your side of the net or go up in the stands. And that, it came down on the Bison side of the net there. 5-3, North Dakota State lead. Johnson to Hilly. Simon with the dig. Jankowski will get it over for IPFW. Free ball chance for North Dakota State. They'll get another one. Jankowski with a defensive return. Stewie, Jankowski wow. with a big dig that time. Both teams a little bit out of sync. Kristen Hilly from the left side, and it's wide. IPFW wins the hard-earned point. That uh, second-to-last play run by the Bisons was just outstanding. Uh, the setter, Johnson, was a little late getting there, but she made an excellent set, and her middle was ready. Unfortunately, Sonara Martins caught the jet stream here in the gate center, and that ball just flew well over the line for a service error. Makes our score 6-4 to four in favor of the Lady Bison. Carrie Fagan, the libero, will serve. Dug out by Christine Simon. Dominiak for Schlindvine on the left side. Yes. Oh, they say it's just long. I thought it was just inside the line, but the line just says no. You were asking uh, off the air before the match about the day off yes. on Friday night, whether it helped or hurt. And I said, well, later in the season, it would probably help when teams are a little more tired. It hasn't helped IPFW, and sometimes early, that extra day off takes you one day out of more out of your rhythm. And what we're alluding to, I, um, North Dakota State played at IUPUI last night and won the match three games to none. IPFW has not played since last Saturday night when South Dakota State, who leads the Summit League, handed the Dons a 3-0 defeat. Oh, Stewie outduels Ream at the net. And North Dakota State takes an 8-5 lead. Stewie, good offensively. She's shown excellent blocking this game. Maybe it's because they're on our side of the net. It's easier for me to watch her, but she's been outstanding in blocking form. Dominiac turns attacker instead of setter and gets an IPFW point. Makes her score 8-6 in favor of North Dakota State. And Jessica will now serve. 5'9 junior from Waterville, Ohio. Double hit called on Maddie Johnson, the Lady Bison setter. IPFW climbs to within one at eight to seven. Chuck Irby, the up official, has been calling fairly tight, but consistently, and neither coach has had any cause for complaint. Dominiac wide on the serve. Third one this uh, set. The other thing I'm just looking at, Mike, 10 hitting errors by IPFW already. That, that doesn't count the service errors, that's just the offensive errors. That's a lot. That's a lot. Kristen Hilly with the serve from the backcourt. Dominiac for Reem. Rebecca Reem has heard from for the first time in game two. She had five kills in game one. And it's her first one here in the second game. She leads IPFW and kills. Lopez leads North Dakota State. Schlinvine serves it long and strong. And you know, the thing is, Mike, it's not that we're missing on an aggressive jump server, not we're missing at the back line or a corner. It's not that we're just barely going out of bounds. We're missing by a bunch. Yeah, the old feast or famine theory. Vandenberg serving for North Dakota State. And the swing is wide. I believe that was by Ream. And now it's an 11-8 Lady Bison advantage. She had the block beat there. She just didn't put the ball in, in the bounds. Dominiac setting up Sonara Martins. Lopez gets the dig. Now we go back to Stewie off the net and off the, the touch. Block. That again showed what I was talking about earlier about how North Dakota State is keeping the ball in play so the, the setter can handle it. Timeout called by IPFW. We'll take a break as well. 12-8 North Dakota State. This is IPFW Women's Volleyball on CATV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. 
Back at the gate center, there might be someone for uh, to, for Arnie. Have to, well, I'm gonna have to talk to him. I'm <laughs> make sure that he's planning to enroll when he becomes uh, 18 years old. It is 12-8 in favor of North Dakota State. Game two of our best of five match. Lady Bison won the game one, 30 to 24. IPFW is lucky it's only a four point advantage because they have been outplayed in pretty much every part of the game. Brooke Vandenberg with a jump serve. Dominiac setting up Jessica Miller. How important was it for IPFW to get that point coming off the timeout? Well, really important. When uh, you call a timeout, you need to score that next, that next point. Rebecca Ream will jump serve it. Nice serve that time. And that time Johnson outdueled Sonara Martins in a battle of number eight set the net. That's the second time we saw the shorter, smaller setter uh, beat the hitter on the other side of the net on a joust. It's, it's timing is what it is. Johnson serving for North Dakota State again. Oh, Stewie blocked it wide, I think. Oh, uh, or it blocked. Yeah, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's thinking it was in. I thought maybe it, it took Chuck Irby a long time to make his decision. Well, he was he had a look at uh, the line judge and his down official, see if everybody was going to call differently. Another point for IPFW, and now it's a 13-11 score. Jessica Miller, again, she had a career night eight days ago, 26 kills and 14 digs against these Lady Bison. Dominiac with a good dig. Martins, Johnson digs it for North Dakota oh, that, State. Wow, I thought that one mis was mishandled. Dominiac left side for Sonara. Martins, yes, off the hands of Sheridan. Three points in a row for IPSW, and it's a one-point game now, 13-12. Miller with a float serve. Martins, oh, wow. That uh, was a back row setter. Huh? There we go. Oh, the Dons tie it off the touch. That position has been open all night uh, on the North Dakota State side. I'm not sure about the IPFW one, but it's one to take advantage of. And now it is North Dakota State that's deciding to call a timeout. We're tied at 13 apiece. Learn more about Mastodon Sports by tuning in to Mastodon Spotlight each Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday here on CATV. Here's truly Mike Moss, reviews the recent IPFW sports activities. We look at game footage and visit with coaches and players. Again, Mastodon Spotlight now in its ninth year. See it on Wednesdays at 7.30, Fridays at 6.30, right here on CATV. Well, the IPFW timeout uh, worked to their advantage. They scored, what, four points? Right. Uh, and now uh, we'll see if North Dakota State stops the momentum and gets the lead back here. Because it was we said earlier, it is important to, if you call a timeout, it's very important you get the next point. When Kelly Hartley Hutton called her timeout, the score was 12 8 North Dakota State, and now we're tied at 13. So five out of uh, the last six points going in the blue and white favor. Jessica Miller will continue to serve for IPFW. Johnson for Stewie. Nice dig by Jamie Schwartz. Martins found the open spot in the middle of the floor. And IPFW takes a 14-13 lead. It's the first lead they've had in game two. Deep serve. A little miss hit by Manny Johnson. Trying to get it over to Christy Stewie. The what we call the first rotation uh -huh. when the setter is the server or playing right back on serve receive is some, usually the most difficult one for any team. And IPFW made a big mental error there by letting them out of that. Another service error by IPFW stops their run. It's now 15-14. Kelly Lopez will serve for North Dakota State. Martins, nice dig by Fagnon. Dominiac going to Parker, and that is dug out. Christian Hilly. Schwartz with a dig. Left side pass from Martins. Yes! Just inside the line. The line judges are earning their money tonight. Both teams are going for the lines. More than I've seen in quite some time. And I think both defenses are, are making that possible. Both are trying to cover the middle of the court more, and that opens up things on the on the lines. Stewie 
Gets the point. Taryn Parker's block attempt went wide left into the crowd. Lady Bison climbed to within one at 16-15 IPFW. And the libero, Kerry Fagnan, will serve. 5'7 senior from Fridley, Minnesota. Deep into the backcourt. The Miniac for Parker. And yes, off the hand of Vandenberg. Mark, I'm seeing more emotion by IPFW in game two than I did in game one by far. Well, yeah, you're right. And it, that rally helped there, being down, what was it, 12 to 8 at the time? Yes. Out. Jankowski with the serve, the set for Stewie. And the Dons block it, tag teaming it, Ream and Schlinbein. It's now an 18 59 Mastodon lead. A lollipop served by Peachy. Now that was uh, that was meant to be a short serve, so it looks like a lollipop, but it really messes up the offense. The libero had to come up in front of the three-meter line to pass it, and she had she struggled with it. It's a four-point IPFW lead. Peachy Jankowski trying the same type of serve. Hilly, Jankowski with the dig, Dominiac, and Stewie keeps it alive. Free ball chance for the Dons. Ream, oh, the block by Stewie at the net. The left side block for North Dakota State continues to be good. And that was a good play by Lopez in the back row. Playing, I think she's playing middle back. Yeah, she is. That's unusual for someone of her size to play middle back. You usually want uh, your libero back there, or a defensive specialist. Schlenwein, and that's kept alive. We go over to Vandenberg, left side, dug out by Martins. The Miniac back for Sonara. Yes! Sonara has been finding that little in-between spot, Mark. Well, yeah, and that, that's not Lopez's ball. Uh, the wings have to come in and play that, especially the libero from the left, left back. Timeout called by, I believe, North Dakota State. That is their second and final allotted timeout here in game number two with the 20 to 16 IPFW lead. Mark, we, we had this little break. We can tell our viewers that Summit League standings right now South Dakota State on top at 3-0, North Dakota State 2-1, Oral Roberts, Western Illinois 1-0, IUPUI Oakland 1-2, UMKC, which is Missouri, Kansas City, and Centenary out of Shreveport, Louisiana. They are 0-1, and IPFW, who was the preseason pick to win the Summit League, they are in the basement at 0-2, and there you see the overall standings on the right of your screen. South Dakota State 12-3, North Dakota State 10-3, and you see IPFW down at the bottom at 6-6. Six and six. I've been following this since the program started. I can't recall a time when IPFW was last in any conference we were in, in volleyball. Well, they picked that. Uh, they made the big trip to North and South Dakota. Yeah, they started off against they started two of the off toughest with teams. The tough, two, with the, the longest trips. Teams. Right. So, and that was a bus trip. Yes. Well, back we go, and Jessica Dominiak will serve for IPFW. Don's up by four, make it five. As Kelly Lopez unable to dig that serve out. I said earlier that IPFW has to not just get aces, they have to score off the serve. Aces help, but they have to run a string of two, three, four points with their good servers. Lopez, high set for Hilly. Dug out by Miller. Schlinvine from the left side, and that is dug out by Lopez, deep. Ream dug out by Fagnon. Oh, nice dive there by Johnson. Back and forth we go. Ream dug out by Fagnon again. Dominiak with the dig. Miller setting up Rebecca Ream. Lopez dives to the floor. Vandenberg. Schlin oh, what a rally. Little dink shot, Stewie digs it out. Vandenberg left side wide, or is it on the touch? Or it's just inside? No, inside, it was in. What a rally. That was a good rally. But once again, North Dakota State showed their excellent ball handling. They kept every first ball in play, so the second handler, the setter usually, could at least do something with it. Kristen Hilly with the serve for the Lady Bison. Ream, and she'll get the point as the block attempt is wide left. 22-17 is our score. IPFW with the lead and the serve. Mayara Schlinvine with the honors. IPFW going from right to left on your TV screen here in game two. Johnson setting up Lopez. And the block by Miller is just wide. 
And that time, Miller anticipated it, but hands weren't in the right spot. Well, yeah, she didn't press in. It, it was, Lopez was coming in at an angle, and so she went up straight. The ball's going to come right back the same angle. Vandenberg serving oh, for her. That, that was illegal. Guess it didn't matter. Point for uh, North Dakota State. Now right, it's. Kinder Stocker should have been screaming on that one. So I think that was an illegal second contact by the setter. 22 19, our score. Dominiac setting up Miller right side. And off the touch by Johnson, it's IPFW point. Stops the little run there. The lead is back up to four, and here's Ream with the jump serve into the net. That's either five or six service errors in this game alone. They all came early, and now we're seeing another one. And again, that wasn't a good error. That was just a miss. Maddie Johnson, the setter, serving for North Dakota State. Martins will dig it out. The mini act for Parker. A short set. Taryn Parker, the freshman, came through with a good swing. I think that's her first kill tonight. No, she no, got she three had, kills. 24-20. Yeah. The Don's up by four. Sheridan, long. Is there a touch? Nope, no touch. 25-20, and Miller will continue to serve for IPFW. Johnson to Stewie, wow. and Parker blocks it. Johnson going the other side to Lopez. Was dug nice, out by Schwartz. Nice save by Johnson on that first pass. Martins dug out by Johnson. Stewie setting up double, hit, double hit on Christy Stewie. IPFW with their biggest lead in game two, 26 to 20. And another service error. This late in the game, uh, service errors hurt more. I know it's kind of like if you miss, you lose a basketball game by one point, is it the free throw you missed at the buzzer or the first one in the game that cost you the game? It's always the last one you remember, isn't it? Yep. Lopez with the save. Hilly dug out by Jamie Schwartz. Dominiac back to Jamie. Oh, low hit into the net. Back to back points now for North Dakota State. They're down to within four. Lopez continues to serve. Dominiac left side for Sonara, the tip shot. That's dug out by Maddie Johnson. Nice dig there, Dominiac swings it. Stewie in the deep part of the court. Schwartz saves it. Johnson for Stewie. Martins tries her luck. Oh, nice swing there. North Dakota State just gets it inside in the back corner. Corners are always open on both sides of the net. And Kelly Hartley Hutton says time for IPFW to talk things over. It is 26-23 in favor of the Mastodons. And that is Kelly's first timeout, I believe, called. No, second. Second. Remember, we had that four-point run after 12 to 8. That's right. So, so now both teams are out of timeouts. Both teams are out of timeouts here. I don't know where they're at on subs, so they're going to be, they probably are, probably have some subs. Left. I think they're allowed 15 total. Is it 15 or 12? I think it's 15. It changes every three months or something. I've never been able to keep up with the substitution rule in the women's game. There'll be a 10 minute break between games two and three, and during the course of that 10 minutes, we're going to chat with uh, my former colleague and your current colleague, Ryan Parrott, assistant men's volleyball coach here at IPFW. Looking forward to that little conversation. Yeah, Rock hasn't done any uh, broadcast lately, has he? Hadn't we don't had, let him. He we hasn't had a chance to because he's, of his duties as uh, uh, assistant coach. Here's a good look at Kelly Hartley Hutton, their ninth year. Six of our eight previous years, the team has had at least 22 wins, including 26 last year. Oh, nice serve. Well, that time the timeout backfired on IPFW, and now the Lady Bison are within two at 26-24. Kelly Lopez will continue to serve. Kelly Lopez has 10 digs. Leads both teams. Well, two years ago as a freshman, she was second on the North Dakota State team in kills with 316 in kills per game, 2.7. Little jump serve, dug out by Jankowski. Dominiak setting up Simon. That's dug out by Sheridan. Left side to Hilly. 
Nice dig by Jankowski. Simon for Martins. She tries that corner, but it's wide again. And now the lead is down to one. And it was 26-20 IPFW, and North Dakota State has ripped off five points in a row. Lopez serving for the tie. Martins left side, yes. Hilly unable to block it cleanly. Talk about needing a point at the yep. appropriate yeah. time. And I think they need a real point here, meaning a point off a serve. Martins has to have a good, tough serve. Deep into the court. That was a good serve. Stewie blocked by Parker. Sheridan going to set up Hilly. Is it long? Yes. Jankowski dove for it, but if you're an IPFW fan, you're glad she wasn't able to touch it. Well, she knew where the back line was. She dove inside the back line. When she saw it going over, she knew she didn't have to get it. Another service error, by this time by Sonara Martins. Yeah, that was not good, but I'd, I'd almost be willing to trade that. Her first one was tough, and we were able to score a point off mm -hmm. of it. Now we just have to side out here. Kerry Fagnon to serve. Jankowski digging in. Dominiak. Oh, Lopez saves it. Johnson for Vandenberg. Nice dig by Jankowski. Schlinvine, Lopez with the dig. Vandenberg just inside the line, and it's 28-27. The lead cut to one. This point is important for North Dakota State because right now they're, to, they're at a disadvantage that they cannot, they have to make up or they lose. So they need another real point here. Simon digs it. Dominiak setting up Schlinvine. Kept alive by Fagnan. Dominiak back to Schlinvine. Partially blocked. Hits the floor. The Dons get the point. Well, that time, Dominiak went right back to Mayara Schlinvine, second time in a row. And it's game point, IPFW. Peachy Jankowski to serve. The IPFW faithful on their feet. A little lollipop serve. Fagnan digs it. Vandenberg, nice save that time by Simon. Martins into the backcourt. Johnson with the dig. Hilly off the net wide, and IPFW comes away with a hard-earned win in game two. 30 to 27, Mark. We're going to be here a while. We're going to go at least four. Maybe they'll pass overtime. <laughs> we never know. IPFW now squared this match up at a game apiece. Ten-minute intermission coming up. When we return, Ryan Parrott will chat with us, tell us about IPFW men's volleyball. You're watching IPFW women's volleyball on CATV. <laughs> I go to class and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I want the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You gotta put it in stocks. If you want to get ahead. No, no, bonds. And oh, CD is not an Stick it under the mattress. <laughs> you want getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. When you went to college, did you know what you were going to major in before you started classes? When you graduated, did you already know what your career path would be? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll find out how students pick majors and career paths with both academic advisors and career counselors. We'll also highlight a new master's degree in education with a major in special education. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Welcome back 
back, everybody, to the Hear Your Gate Sports. IPFW, we're between games two and, or I should say, uh, yes, between games two and three of our best of five match between IPFW and North Dakota State. Lady Bison won game one, 30 to 24. The Macedons game two, 30 to 27. So now it evolves into a, a best of three affair. And during this break, we're going to chat with an old friend, a former colleague of mine here on uh, CATV when it was known as both Channel 5, Channel 56, Channel 6. Uh, Ryan Perrot, now uh, Arnie Ball's right-hand man with the men's volleyball team. And let's go back briefly, Ryan, to last May because you and the men's volleyball team had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. First of all, it's, it's an honor to be here. Secondly, Mark Franke has the biggest head I know to put on these headsets. <laughs> Number three, I don't even know if I get any of those channels anymore on my Comcast cable, but those were great memories, and thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, we had a wonderful year uh, last season, obviously making it all the way to the championship match in the Final Four, losing to uh, UC Irvine uh, in four tough sets. Uh, our guys showed so much throughout the course of the year. Um, adversity they overcame. Uh, a lot of personal issues that they overcame to, uh, you know, to, to, to make it to that level. I've always said, you know, when you're at the summit of your, of your sport and to play in the championship match, ESPN2, uh, it was just a great thrill, a great honor. And, and, and we were so proud of our guys and the way that they handled themselves throughout that course of the run into the match and afterwards. Obviously, it was disappointing to lose, but uh, it, it was just a, a magical experience. You know, I stop and think, this past year, the men's team made it to the national championship match. The previous year, they made it to the final four. Quite an accomplishment to go back-to-back -back final fours in two years in a row. The last time it had been done at this program was 91-92. Um, some guy by the name of Loy Ball was the <laughs> cornerstone of that era. It's amazing because, and the year prior to that, by the way, we lost at our conference finals to Ohio State. I've always believed you have to put in your time before you get to the next level. And if you take a look at any sport, any particular sport, you always have to get over a hurdle. And we did that two years ago. Uh, and it was an unbelievable thrill to go back. It gets harder and harder, though, each year. The guys will tell you that. It gets harder and harder. This year will be the toughest yet. Well, let's talk about 2008 because, yeah, in essence, you're going for the trifecta, the third, hopefully the third successive trip to the Final Four, but you've got a long road to go before you get to that point. It's a long season. Uh, we just started training a couple weeks ago. Uh, we're just getting in the gym uh, this week for the first time with individual training. It's a long road. It's only September. I've always said it's a marathon, not a sprint. The competition is going to be stiff. Our conference continues to get better and better each year. You have the... The familiar faces, the Ball States, the Ohio States, the Loyola Chicago's of the world. There's sleeper teams out there. Lewis University out of Romeoville, Illinois. They're going to be a fantastic team this year. Mercyhurst, Quincy's. These teams you can't take lightly on any given night because they can bite you in the back. Real briefly, Cowan Lundin was the fine center for the last two seasons, but he's graduated. That's a big hole to fill. It's a big hole to fill. Uh, he graduated last year, and Vitor Oliveira graduated as well. Um... Thankfully, we, we hope we've brought in two nice recruits from Germany, uh, a setter and a middle, who we think could hopefully step into those two roles and provide us with some stability, especially early on as they learn our system, but provide us with some stability early as they get familiar with our system, then their play will be able to rise down the stretch. Mark, as always, thanks for coming over and chatting with us about men's volleyball. Um, continued success. Thanks for having me, and I hope this doesn't go five. Go Dodds. <laughs> Our special guest has been Ryan Parad, my old partner for three years doing volleyball. And um, now the head assistant coach. Is that the right term to say? Assistant, assistant. men's volleyball coach. Yeah, you're Arnie's right-hand man <laughs> for the men's volleyball program. We'll take a timeout and come back. Again, we're between games two and three of our match between IPFW and North Dakota State. And you're watching Mastodon Women's Volleyball on CATV. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at $2,400 a month.
Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When you went to college, did you know what you were going to major in before you started classes? When you graduated, did you already know what your career path would be? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll find out how students pick majors and career paths with both academic advisors and career counselors. We'll also highlight a new master's degree in education with a major in special education. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Welcome back, everybody. We're between games two and three between IPFW and North Dakota State. Mark Franke, we're seeing some of the numbers on the screen uh, after two games. And uh, your thoughts? IPFW uh, really improved offensively in the second set. And so uh, even though there are a lot of, still a lot of errors on the IPFW side, those are mostly from game one. And uh, that makes a big difference. IPFW hit 15%, which doesn't sound very good. North Dakota State only hit 5%, which sounds a lot worse. Blo blocking is still pretty even, and that's unfortunate for IPFW. IPFW has more service aces, but remember that string of service errors early in game two. That really hurt. Seven service errors in game two alone as we get a good look at uh, the head coach, Eric Hinderstocker from North Dakota State, talking to Kristen Keevan, who is a 6'2 sophomore from Wapaton, North Dakota. Well, it's now a best of three match, and obviously Kelly made adjustments in game two. What do you think North Dakota State's going to do in terms of adjustments for game three? Well, I actually thought North Dakota State was playing well, but they were not really running a crisp offense, and that was primarily because of the first uh, contact ball handling which I thought North Dakota State did a good job of keeping balls in play, but now they have to have good passes. Like, Re that's not. Rebecca Reams serving for the Dons to start game three, and Hilly hits it into the net, and for the first time in the three games played this far, IPFW wins the first point of the game. Now, not to take uh, anything away from IPFW, because IPFW got much more aggressive on the serving after they got out of that. You see there's another bad pass. Another point, four hits called by our up official Chuck Irby on North Dakota State. And that's the aggressive IPFW serving that's making the difference. If that can continue, North Dakota State will continue to struggle with it. Jump serve by Rebecca Ream. Fagan digs it out. Johnson setting up Lopez who whams it off the hand of Jamie Schwartz. And Lopez it's eight one. kills now. Martins actually has ten and leads in kills, but Lopez uh, leads the Bisons. Kevin Lopez, the redshirt sophomore out of Minnesota. Darren Parker has it dug away by Lopez. Here's Hilly. Nice dig by Schwartz. Free ball chance coming up for North Dakota State. Johnson setting up Lopez. Miller digs it out. Miller, nice dig there by Maddie Johnson. Back and forth we go, a long rally. And Martins tried to dink it over the net, but she went wide left, and North Dakota State wins the point, and it's tied 2-2. That set actually went over to the top of the net, and I think uh, we just didn't take advantage of it there. Lopez again with a little running jump serve. Dominiac for Sonara Martins on the left side. Lopez with a big dig. Oh, high in the air, Fagnon defensively returns it. The Miniac for Miller is a Yes, it's in. That almost looked like a combination play. Probably was meant to be a, a, almost a double quick, but uh, Miller was kind of back farther than what you normally be for a quick set, but it worked. 3 2 Dons. Kristen Hilly dug out by Miller. 
Dominiak to Taryn Parker off the touch. The Dons are off to a 4-2 lead. What do you think Kelly said to them in, in between the two games? Because they have really come out aggressively here in game three. I remember, they finished the second one aggressively. A lift called and, on North Dakota State. And you called it. You said they are playing with a lot more emotion, with a lot more excitement. I think they sensed that, that they that they were improving, and that then that emotion helped the improvement to go even farther along. Hilly blocked by Parker. That time, Maddie Johnson had to go we're going to get a timeout. Well, no, not, maybe not. not quite yet. 6-2 IPFW. Game three. We're tied at a game of peace. Oh, I got an overlap. Setter left too early, I think. And it was a Now we got the timeout. See, I told you we were going to get it. You called it. Timeout on the floor, 7-2 IPFW. This is IPFW Women's Volleyball on CATV. You know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Kids, too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back, everybody, to IPFW Women's Volleyball here on CATV, along with Mark Franke. I'm Mike Moss. Game three of our best of five match, and IPFW has come out ablaze. They lead North Dakota State 7-2. to Lady Bison called their first of two allotted timeouts. And Jessica Miller will continue to serve. Oh, service error number 12. Service errors really hurt after a timeout, but IPFW is serving aggressively from about the midpoint of the second set through the, into the third now. So if the errors are kept to a minimum and the aggressiveness stays, IPFW will continue to control the match. I think Some, we got the antenna there. Something did. Is there a claim? Yeah, North Dakota Something State. Something got the antenna. And Eric Hinderstocker is talking initially with Elizabeth McHugh, the down official. I don't think the ball could have because I think the ball was farther inside. I don't know whether it was the blocker caught the net. I'm not sure what happened. The but pole I, did move, but I think you're right. I think it was a player contact. Yeah, I, I don't think the ball got it, not on the attack. No, well, IPFW will get the point. It's now 8-3. to three. Sonara Martins will serve. And a lift, a double hit rather, called on Maddie Johnson. North Dakota State making some uncharacteristic errors. I think Maddie Johnson's done a nice job setting all night, and she just needs some better passes coming to her now. Another short serve by Martins. Johnson going to set up Hilly. Dug out initially a self-defense by Jankowski. Gets some help. Left side to Vandenberg. Yes, Brooke Vandenberg, the 5'10 freshman from De Pere, Wisconsin, with the kill. Her seventh of the night. Makes our score nine to four in favor of IPFW. Christy Stewie, what a senior. With the serve for the Lady Bison. Nice dig by Lopez off the Terran Parker swing. Schlinvine off the touch. It's the point for IPFW. When a hitter has a good set and she's one on one against the blocker, she should always win that because she has lots of options. That set was far enough off the net that she could determine the angle. P.G. Jankowski will serve. Dug out by Lopez. Battle at the net. Ream has it dug out. Free ball chance coming up for IPFW. Rebecca Ream off the tape. Stewie with a dig. Vandenberg. Oh, Schlinvine hits the line and a look what I found shot. What do you say, Mark? That sometimes it's rather to be lucky than good? Yeah, that was almost what they called the chicken wing. You know, I just get the elbow out there and you get across the net. It was close and it was right in front of uh, Coach Hinderstocker. He's not happy with the call, so he apparently saw it go the other way. Boy, he threw the one ball and he almost hit his star, Christy Stewie, in the backcourt. Well, I think he's getting frustrated right now. He's not sure what to do next. Jankowski serving for IPFW. Vandenberg. 
Saved. No, oh, good effort initially by Martins and then by Dominiac. But North Dakota State gets the point and stops the run. So now 11 to 5 in favor of the Dons and Kristen Hilly, five man junior from Sauk Rapids, Minnesota to serve. And she serves it long. That's just the third service error of the night for North Dakota State, one in each game thus far. But it may have come at a very bad time for them. They had a nice kill, and if they could have gotten a point here, that would have made a big difference. That would have made that lead five, I think. Instead, right now it's seven. Maddie Johnson for Kelly Lopez. And IPFW could not get that ball successfully over. It's now 12 to six, and Vandenberg will continue to serve. Miller off the hand of Johnson. IPFW is just playing with confidence right now, Mark. That one developed kind of slowly, but she was still one on one. So she came inside the blocker. 13 6 our score. Mayara Schlinvine to serve into the net. I have a feeling that's something that the team's going to be working on very quickly. Well, it's hard to figure out how to work on it. Now well, here is Maddie Johnson, 5'8 sophomore from Lakeville, Minnesota, the setter. And IPFW comes away with the point. Now teams, you, you say they, they have a lot of services. Why don't they work on it? Well, if you go to their practices, they work on it every day. Something different between practice and a real game, I think. Stewie with the dink shot. Schwartz digs it out. Miller from the right side. And that is kept alive. Dominiac setting up Parker. Nice dig by Johnson. Left side Lopez, yes. That's something North Dakota State was successful at in game one. Maddie Johnson getting the ball on the left side to Kelly Lopez. Go back to it here in game three and cut the gap to six. The mini, oh, miss, missed time that time. Oh, nice try by Sonara Martins. Yeah, that was, uh, looked like it was supposed to be what we call a 31 play, but the set was slow, I believe. Jump serve by Lopez. Dominiac setting up Miller. Off the touch. <laughs> See the look on Jamie Schwartz's face talking to Peachy Jankowski. Oh, we're lucky that time. 15-9 is the score. Good block by Parker. And a double hit wow. called. He's really calling that tight. But neither coach is complaining, so they must feel he's calling it consistently. Jessica Miller to continue to serve for IPFW. Up by seven and now by eight. I'm going to go on the books as a service ace. 17-9 in North Dakota State. Calls this. That's their second time out. Well, they are out. The score is 17 to 9. The latest Mastodon scores and stats are available on the World Wide Web by going to gomastodons.com. You can check up on the teams, the players, and the programs anytime you like. It's the official Mastodon website. Again, gomastodons.com. And you can go and you can find out how the men's and women's soccer teams are doing. I know they're going to be both in action tomorrow. The uh, women's team will be in Chicago to take on DePaul. The men's team will be down in Evansville to take on the Aces of the University of Evansville. Tell us about the was at Oregon State. Last Saturday at Corvallis, Oregon, the tournament IPFW was invited to. They defeated the host Oregon State Beavers in the Pac-10 in overtime. About six and a half minutes into overtime, Brett Gordon, the freshman, got his first collegiate goal, and they shocked the Beavers two to one. And uh, a big win for head coach Mike Harper. Well, players are back on the floor. IPFW only has 15 hitting errors, so that means none in this set. So you finish the second one with 15. That's what's really helped. That plus the aggressive serving is probably the most important thing. Sonara Martins blocked the attempt by Sheridan at the net. This probably may not be real intuitive, but the best way to get a strong block is to serve tough. That was a good serve that time. Lopez can only get it over defensively. 
Dominiac for Martins. Boy, she keeps taking that angle. She got it this time. Well, the senior from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Seeing some action. It's 19 to nine. Who would have thunk it here in game three? Well, Beaver Cleaver, I'm not sure. A little pancake save, I thought. Well, it was down. Oh, that was the Beaver. You say, who to thunk it? Yes. Or was it Dizzy Dean? It was one or the other. I think it was Beaver. I'm not sure who, but in any event, it's a 19-10 IPFW League. Libero carry Fagan to serve for North Dakota State. The Maniac setting up Martins on the left side. That's, hits the that pole. That did get the antenna. There's no question on that one. And for those of you that are new to volleyball, when a ball hits the pole, the team that hit it into the pole loses the point. Two points in a row for the Lady Bison. It's now a 19-11 third game. Taryn Parker has her shot dug out by Lopez. Vandenberg, nice real, stick by Jankowski. It's a really nice handle. Lopez dug out by Simon. The nice. Miniac. That's Lopez. the first time she's done that today. Left side Vandenberg deep, but Schwartz is there to stop it. Parker, oh, the uh, Vandenberg blocks the shot by Taryn Parker. I think that play is easier to defend when the setters over to the right side because it doesn't give the hitter enough la lateral movement to move the blockers with her. Fagan continues to serve. It's 19-12 IPFW. Martin's tried it again, but it's wide. And now Kelly Hartley Hutton says, let's call a timeout, settle things down. With the score now 19-13 and the lead cut to just six. Three quick hitting errors by IPFW. And North Dakota State is right back in it. Again, the uh, Lady Bison came to town with a record of 10 and three, two and one in Summit League Conference play. Their victories over IPFW a week ago yesterday, three games to one. And last night they were down in Indianapolis taking on the Jaguars of IUPUI. And they won that contest. Also uh, three games to none. And um, Christy Stewie had a uh, master career high with 26 kills in last night's match. Their loss was to South Dakota State and the Lady Jackrabbits lead the Summit League early on with a conference record of three and oh. Christy Stewie has only six kills tonight, but she has 24 attempts. So she is in the offense. She's just not as effective tonight as she was last night. Well, last year she led all Division I independence in hitting percentage, hitting 356, second in blocks per game at 1.43. Fagnan will serve for the Lady Bison. Dominiac setting up Martins in the middle of the perfect, net. Perfect pass that set up that play. Big point for IPFW. They go back on top now by seven. Schlinvine in for Schwartz. And Sonara Martins getting ready to serve. Senior from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Johnson setting up Hilly. Nice block by Parker. The freshman with a contribution there. Taryn Parker, six foot freshman out of Alto, Michigan. We haven't no. seen much of her this year, have we? Nope, saw a little bit of her uh, in the uh, IPFW Invitational. Well, the IPFW coaching staff is still trying to figure out that second middle position. Vandenberg dug out by Simon. The battle of that goes to Jessica Dominiak, out dueling Brooke Vandenberg. The other thing they did with it, in addition to having played different players there, is they moved it from two away to next to the setter. Now that puts more pressure on that player, being next to the setter. Hilly, Johnson, Stewie. Wow. What a swing by Christy Stewie. Well, North Dakota State needed the point, and they got it. And now Stewie, the 6'2 senior from Hamburg, Minnesota, will throw it up. Serves it deep into the backcourt. Parker. And winning the battle was Vandenberg on the left side of the net for North Dakota State. The lead cut to seven. 22 to 15. This is game three of our best of five match. And it's 1-1. Service error by Christy Stewie. Point and serve goes over to IPFW. P.J. Jankowski, 42nd in the country in digs with the serve. 
Vandenberg. No, that double hit illegal. by Demaniac. Yeah. Elizabeth got it. Elizabeth McHugh, the down official. North Dakota State. Kristen Hilly will serve. Minkowski, Dominiak, Schlinvine, and that's dug out by Stewie. Free ball chance coming up for IPFW. Dominiak setting up Schlinvine. Nice, set. nice save by Fagnan, the libero. Vandenberg. Wow. Wow. He's right. And North Dakota State has cut the, the lead to six. It's now 23 17. North Dakota State hitters. The pin hitters really like to swing at the ball. They usually go out with heat if they can. The Miniac, left side, Schlinvine. Long. No touch. Apparently not. The ball looked like it, it diverted its direction just a little bit at the net, but apparently not. Patty Acevedo coming on the floor for the first time in a long time, replacing Mayara Schlinvine. Kristen Hilly continues to serve for the Lady Bison of North Dakota State. Deep into the backcourt, and Martins couldn't hit it cleanly. That goes in the books as a service ace. And uh, once once a comfortable lead at uh, 22 to 15, 23 to 15, is now 23-19. Acevedo with a big point. That stops the run. Patty Acevedo had two great years at Western Nebraska Community College before transferring to IPFW. It's nice when you put a res uh, substitute in and their first attempt is a kill. Johnson for Kelly Lopez. Jankowski with a big dig. Johnson resets Lopez again. Nice block by Miller and Ream. Back to Lopez. Martins with the saving dig. Acevedo. Oh. Back to Lopez. Off the net, just inside the line. Well, Lopez just knows one thing. Attack, attack, and attack. Exactly. I think uh, Patty Acevedo, when she tipped that ball, if she could have gotten a swing at it, that would have made a difference. Back to Acevedo. There she goes. Boy, <laughs> she, you called it, Mark. Big <laughs> swing. Kristen Hilly could not handle it cleanly. IPFW now leads 25 to 20. They bring in Jamie Schwartz. Oh, that'll teach her. <laughs> Just got a big kill. We'll take her out. Actually, it's a serving sub. <laughs> Jamie Schwartz out of Adams Central High School. Gets it over. Oh! Wow. A mistake on the dig by North Dakota State, and IPFW made it work. This is looking like the IPFW team we remember from previous years, being very aggressive at the net. And then when an overpass comes, go up and swing at it. Johnson setting up Lopez. Who else? Jankowski's dig is wide. And what's interesting, Christy Stewie is the leader in kills and swings, but yet they're going to Lopez. They actually, Stewie and Lopez have the same number of attempts. Lopez is converting at a much higher percentage. 26 21 our score. Miller, nice dig that time by Johnson. Fagan's going to return it. Free ball chance coming up for IPFW. Dominiac setting up Sonara Martins. Nice dig that time by Hilly. Lopez is blocked by Raymond Miller. Sheridan gets it over. Dominiac setting up Rebecca Ream, and that is dug out a long rally. That's two good digs by Johnson. Hilly with a change of pace. Nice stay there by Miller. Three ball chance coming up for IPFW. Miller again, and it's wide. She had the opening and just flat and missed it. Well, the, the timing of the play was off. That developed very quickly, but she just missed the court. She could have found the open court over there, but she was a little long. Maddie Johnson serving for North Dakota State. They're down 26-22, and big swing that time. Twenty-seven, twenty-two. look at determination and Rebecca Reams' face. Sophomore from Wilshire, Ohio. Throws it high into the air and then hits it way too far. A little too jacked up, maybe? Well, I, I don't think so. I, I, with a jump server, it's really the toss that makes all the difference. Dominiac for Terry Parker, and that's blocked about the net. Martins tries her lock, yes. 
Martins has always had success as a shot maker. She's not real tall. She's not real strong. She's just, she's good strength, but not, not overly strong. And so she has to have a lot of shots in her arsenal. Hilly off the hand of Miller. North Dakota State stays alive. It's now 28-24. IPFW with the lead, and Kerry Fagnan, the libero, 5'7", senior out of Fridley, Minnesota, to serve. Have we talked about the libero serving? We haven't yet, but I've been waiting for you to bring up the conversation. Parker has a, has a dugout. Free ball chance coming up for IPFW. Dominiac for Martins. Oh, oh, how that ball got that was, over, I don't know. Vandenberg's yeah, going to go deep. Vandenberg man. made a nice play on that, man. And, and Johnson set her back. You, that, that's what you want to set her to do. You can make it a good defensive player, good handling from a, a hitter. Give them the ball. 20, They're pumped up. Let them swing at it. 28-25. Fagan with another serve. Dominiac. Oh, well, mistiming there, I think. Ooh. Parker gets the friendly tip. Hits the tape and twists away from three, Lady Bison. And it's game point, IPFW. 29-25. Sonara Martins to serve. Johnson setting up Stewie. Jankowski with a dig. Martins from the backcourt. Fagnan digs it out. Back to Hilly. Stuck out that time. Dominiak becomes attacker. Johnson with a dig. Vandenberg and a double hit on Maddie Johnson. And Hinterstocker is livid. Yeah, he's not happy about it. He thinks probably at this point the, the ball handling calls are favoring IPFW. And he's right, but I think the ball handling's gotten sloppier on his side of the court. And that's part of it. IPFW wins game three, 30 to 25. They take the two to one lead in the match. Time out for a break. Let's catch our breath. Get ready for game four. You're watching IPFW Women's Volleyball on CATV. Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. People with diabetes are two to four times more likely to suffer a stroke than people without diabetes. And many who survive are severely disabled. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. Learn how to reduce your risk of stroke. Call for your free diabetes survival guide. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone to a co college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When you went to college, did you know what you were going to major in before you started classes? When you graduated, did you already know what your career path would be? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll find out how students pick majors and career paths with both academic advisors and career counselors. We'll also highlight a new master's degree in education with a major in special education. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access TV. Warning. Ruthless invaders are among us, and the future of fishing depends on stopping them dead. Only you can prevent invasive species from spreading before it's too late. Inspect, clean, and drain your boat, motor, and live wells, and properly dispose of invasive species on land, not back in the water. Stop these evil menaces from taking over and threatening our precious outdoor heritage. Inspect, clean, and drain. Do your part to halt the silent invasion. Everybody to the Harry Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW, along with Mark Franke, I'm Mike Maz. IPFW, after losing game one, North Dakota State 30 to 24 have come back, and they've won game two by a score of 30 to 27, and game three by a score of 30 to 25. And Mark Franke, what's been the difference in games two and three? Well, the difference, uh, IPFW has 30 more swings than uh, North Dakota State, and so that makes a big difference. The other thing is the ball handling on the North Dakota State side has deteriorated. That's why uh, 
Coach uh, Hinterstocker was complaining to the officials between games. He thought it was they're being called unfairly against his team. But that setter struggling, Johnson struggling. She's going behind the three meter line a lot to handle the ball, and she's getting called on those. So I understand his frustration, but I, I'm not sure that uh, that he's got us that solid a case. Sonara Martins has 14 kills to lead the IPFW attack. Kelly Lopez, 12 for North Dakota State. Lady Bison, Maddie Johnson serving. We're underway in game four. Martins comes right back with her 15th kill. Right now, the momentum at the start is important for both teams, and probably more so for North Dakota State. They need to turn it back into a contested match. Miller serving for IPFW. Maddie Johnson setting up Lopez right off of the hand of Jamie Schwartz. And that was no surprise to anybody, was it? No. Kelly Lopez, 13 kills and 27 swings tonight. One air hitting 444. And now she's going to throw it up and serve. Martins dug out by Lopez. Johnson going to set up Stewie. But it's a free ball chance for IPFW. Martins off the touch. If you look at the distribution of the sets on the North Dakota State side, it's well distributed. Lopez 27, Hilly 27, Stewie 27, Vandenberg 23. You couldn't ask for a, a more distributed offense. And you it's just that some are more effective than others. Lopez and Vandenberg, very effective. The other two, not so much. Sonara Martin serving for IPFW. Kristen Hilly. Well, we got the, that got hit the, the antenna net. on that. Yeah, he also hit the net and the antenna. 3-1 IPFW here in the early moments of game four. Mastodon's trying to snap a two-game losing streak, a two-match losing streak, and get back over the 500 mark. Nice set. Dominiac, yes. The setter turned attacker comes through. Let's look at the distribution of sets on the IPFW side. Sonara Martin's 44. Nobody's close. Miller, 22. Reem, 19. Parker, 16, is a uh, substitute. And Schlind Schlindvine, uh, 19. Dominiac setting up Acevedo and a miss hit by Patty. Prior to that, we had seen a couple of nice blocks at the net by Taryn Parker. Yeah, she's played real well. When, she came in when? In the third? She yeah. came in the second? I think maybe in late in the second or early in the third. Here is Kerry Fagan singing, uh, should say serving for North Dakota State. Acevedo is wide. Try taking a page out of Sonara Martins' book on the sharp angle. And the Lady Bison have closed within a point. It's now four to three. She came in late in the second, according to the stat sheet. The Miniac for Acevedo. Off the hand of Johnson. Fagan tries to hit it, but unfortunately, Kerry couldn't give it. Give her an A for effort, but the point goes to IPFW. Peachy Jankowski, the senior out of the north side of Detroit, will serve. Deep into the corner, Lopez digs it out. Johnson for Vandenberg, wide. You, you alluded to this earlier, Mark, both teams like to take the sharp angles. Yeah, the, a lot of the sets are off the net and kind of inside, and so that angle opens up because that left side blocker rolls back and comes into towards the middle of the court, and that leaves the left front of the net on the other side open. That's, nope, double hit, I think. Called on IPFW. and. North Dakota State will get the point. They closed to within two. It's now six to four. And, and here is the 6'2 senior, Christy Stewie. Played in every single game, not this match, but game that North Dakota State played in last year. 116 of them. Well, that means a lot of things, but one thing it definitely means is that she's playing well and she stays healthy. Rebecca Ream with her 10th kill of the night. 7-4, Don's up by three. Dominiac, the left-handed serve. Vandenberg, that ball seemed to hang at the net. Jankowski with a nice dig. Miller from the right side, way wide. And we've got a ball handling error. I thought the stat sheets are supposed to show ball handling errors. They're not coming through. I'll we'll have to ask Lisa Horman, the official statistician afterwards, why we're not getting ball handling error stats. No, we'll find that out. Here is Kristen Hilly. A short serve. 
Dominiac for Reem. Oh, nice dig that time by Stewie. Dominiac again to Rebecca Reem off the hand of Christy Stewie. And it's now eight to five, and timeout called by North Dakota State. With the score 8-5 IPFW, there's a break in the action. You're watching IPFW Women's Volleyball on CATV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. I made you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back here at the Gate Center, 8-5 is our score. IPFW with the lead in game four of our best of five match. The Macedons lead two games to one. Jamie Schwartz out of Decatur, Indiana to serve for IPFW. The Don's got a quick point there off the timeout. IPFW just used the serve effectively tonight after the, that first run of weak serves. Johnson setting up Vandenberg. Schwartz dug out by Christy Stewie. Going back to Kelly Lopez. Off the touch. Miller and Ream tried to block it, but the block attempt went wide. The score now is 9 to 6 in favor of the Mastodons. Brooke Vandenberg to serve for North Dakota State. Dominiac setting up Miller. Dug out by Stewie. Jessica goes back to Ream, and that's blocked by Sheridan. Battle at the net. Johnson setting up Lopez, left side, long and wide. What Lopez wanted to do there is wipe it off the block, but our uh, blocker kept her hands in and didn't uh, touch that ball because it was clearly going out of bounds if she didn't touch it. Rebecca Ream with a jump serve. 10-6, Don lead. Nice dig. Parker setting up Miller. Johnson digs it out. Stewie's going to play the setter for Lopez. Martins with the dig. Here is Miller on the right side off the hand of Hilly. I think she split the block there. Both blockers went up vertically, and they didn't close into each other. So I think Jessica Miller came right between the two of them. 11-6 IPFW. Lopez on the left side. Did that hit the net? I got the antenna. The antenna, I think. I think. And IPFW slowly starting to stretch the lead. It's it only Lopez's third hitting error on the night. Ream, I should say, make that nice Martin's touch dugout. by Johnson. And Lopez will come away with her 15th kill of the night. Boy, she just keeps hammering away, doesn't she? Boy, swing, 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 and swing some more. And we just keep seeing her, but then you look at the distribution, and it's it's still very tight. Four players between yeah. 27 and 32 attempts. And you talked about that in our first broadcast of the season. About how when you can distribute the, the play, it's. And I think maybe part of IPFW's distribution issue now is two of the four or five main hitting positions have had some substitutions coming in and out. So, mm -hmm. you, but among the other three, it's still Sonara Martin's way ahead of everybody else. Maddie Johnson serving for the Lady Bison of North Dakota State. Nice Good. block. It really was a nice block. That left side block of North Dakota State works very, very well. Miller will serve. Martins with the dink. And it is now 14 to 8 in favor of IPFW. Here's where IPFW needs to stay aggressive serving but not have dumb errors. That was a deep serve by Miller. Ooh. And the Don's come away with the point as Johnson tried to find Sheridan cross court, hit it too deep. 
substitution now for North Dakota State coming in. Abby Perez, a 5'5 freshman from West Bend, Wisconsin. That may be the first sub. Of, no, I'll take that back. There have been a couple of others. Well, I don't know if they've had any subs other than the typical back row defensive specialist. I think that's the and first it, position yeah. sub. I think you're right. Well, we'll see how she does. Abby Perez. Meanwhile, Kelby Lopez will serve. The team is down 15 to 9. Martin's on the left side. We got a touch. Yes. Abby Perez is 5-5. Five, five. Now we'll see if she sets in what we call the 4 tour. She comes around to the front court and is at the net. New center. Right. That's, she came in for Johnson. Yeah. That is Perez. I take that back. Yeah. She's shown as a defensive specialist on the roster, but she's in the setter's position. Yeah, I just noticed that she was the one that was setting things up. And oh, we got to overlap again. Can you explain it's, that it's, more for our viewers? Yeah, it's, it looks like both time is in what we call rotation two, where the setter's middle back. She's lined up up front behind the middle hit, or the uh, opposite, who's at the net. And if she leaves too soon, you're not supposed to leave until the ball's contact. Now everybody cheats. And it's like, you know, the second base play in baseball. But apparently she's leaving too soon. Both setters on the North Dakota State side have been called for that. 18-9, Christy Stewie, the main gal. Over the last three plus years for North Dakota State, comes through with a big kill. And here is Kerry Fagnan. You know what, They're, they have been substituting um, Sheridan and Vandenberg. Dominiac for Acevedo. Nice block, Dominiac actually with a dig. Stewie with a dink shot. Jankowski saves it back to Patty Acevedo. Her dink shot is pancaked. And a miss hit by Vandenberg. But well, that wasn't Vandenberg's it, fault. She was no. just running to try to get a, any kind of contact with that ball. 19-10 our score. IPFW with a nine-point lead here in game four of our best of five match. Peachy Jankowski with a knuckleball type serve. Vandenberg left side and yes, off the hand of Christine Simon. What's happened there on the play before this one? Remember I said earlier that uh, the North Dakota State team, the ball handlers were always giving the next contact a chance. Yes. And that, that wasn't the case there. No one had a chance at that ball. Dominiak dug out by Lopez. Vandenberg on the left side, touched initially by Ream. Simon keeps it alive and a double oh, hit wow. called on Christine Simon. He's calling it really tight. It's now 19 to 12 in favor of IPFW. Christy Stewie, 6'2 senior, will serve for North Dakota State. The Miniac to Acevedo, off the touch. Patty Acevedo with her fifth kill of the night. You get the feeling, Mark, that IPFW is now feeling it. They see the finish line in sight. That's well, a 20 point mark here yeah, in let's game hope four. So. Volleyball is a game of uh, momentum swing, so we'll see if, if IPFW can keep it going. Good block there by Rebecca Ring. Well, same spot. They just keep going for that, don't they? Acevedo left side, sure, dink shot, saved by Stewie. Oh, yeah, came over. Green went over the net to get it. Great idea, but. You know, those kinds of mistakes, think, well, that was dumb, but that's because they're being aggressive, and you have to balance that with other aggressive plays they made and then, you know, give them an average or something. Kristen Hilly will serve for the Lady Bison. They're down by seven. Ream dug out by Hilly. Lopez setting up Vandenberg. Martins with the dig in the backcourt. Miller on the right side. Dug out by Maddie Johnson, who's back on the floor. Vandenberg off the touch. Can Acevedo save it? No. Van Vandenberg's been very effective for them tonight. She's hitting 37%. Lopez is hitting 37%. But everybody else is, is down at 20 or below. Now the lead is down to 6, 20 to 14. North Dakota State fighting back. Jankowski with the dig for the Dons. Again, Acevedo on the left side. Hilly with the dig. Johnson decides to attack from the center spot. That is dug out. Miller into the backcourt. 
Johnson for Lopez, right side. Nice dig by Dominiac. Battle at the oh, net. Nice play. Vandenberg nice out duels Reed. And you wonder if Kelly Hartley Hutton's going to call a timeout. The lead's dwindled to five. IPFW is trying to do too much right now. They need to settle down a little bit, play their game, and not try to make every play into some kind of super play. A Here's the timeout. Ace. And there is the timeout called by Kelly Hartley Hutton as she has seen a 20 to 12 lead shrink to 20 to 16. In game four of our best of five match, IPFW will take a look at uh, what's coming up. They will play tomorrow afternoon here at 3 o'clock against Oakland University. That match will be broadcast over the Internet, GoMastodons.com. Next week, they're on the road next Friday in Tulsa against the Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts. And then on Saturday night, one week from tonight, they'll be in Shreveport, Louisiana to take on the Centenary Ladies. It's interesting, uh, Mark, Centenary out of Shreveport. Their men's teams are called the Gents, and their ladies' teams are called the Ladies. Makes sense, I guess. I guess. So what? What is the? Uh, what is the mascot? Is it like uh, I don't someone know. in formal clothes or something? Is <laughs> are there some? There's probably what do they call them? Cotillions down there where they get all dressed up. I have no idea. Yeah, we're Northerners. What do we know, right? You know, when I think of Louisiana, I think of Cajun for some reason. Well, the timeout is completed. Players back on the floor. Kristen Hilly will continue to serve for North Dakota State. Nice save that time by Vandenberg. Oh, going four back hits, to Brooke. Four hits, four hits. Well, they're going to no. call it a North Dakota four State hits. point. I guess they're going to call that was just off the block. So hit two blockers. Five points in a row by North Dakota State. They're now down by three. And a miss. Oh, the Minneapolis keeps it alive. Johnson setting up Vandenberg. Off the touch, I do believe. And it landed in. 20 to 18. North Dakota State in a must win situation. They show the match two games to one. Trying to adjust their passing alignment. Dominiac right side for Miller, and that's kept alive. And a swing shot's almost okay, by good Lopez. For second time out here. Well, it is now 20 to 19. So I think what we're seeing, Mike is that North Dakota State has gone back to what gave them success earlier, and that's handling that ball well, keeping it alive, giving themselves a chance. IPFW got back in it by doing what they do best, and that's serving tough, which, of course, took North Dakota State out of their game. It's like a you know, chess match. Mm -hmm. You do one thing, and then uh, well, and the other team has to counter that, or the other team has to be aggressive with theirs and make you counter. Yep, they see you. Over 400 fans tonight here at the Gates Center to watch this women's volleyball match. Get a good look at a lot of them, and you can see the concerns on a lot of the faces on their IPFW fans. Well, Reem, Acevedo, Dominiak, Jankowski, Martins, I did, Miller. I did say, Mike, remember that uh, volleyball is a game of momentum, and yes. momentum changes. Well, obviously it changed, and after a timeout is an excellent opportunity for the team that's behind to make the change back. The team has been losing momentum. Kristen Hilly serves it into the net. Oh, you called it, Mark. Service error came at the worst possible time for the Lady Bison. They were serving to tie this fourth game up, and now they're down two. Now let's see what happens here. If Schwartz serves tough and IPFW scores, then that momentum will be shifting back to IPFW. Good serve, serve by tough. Jamie Schwartz. Stewie gets it over. Dominiac going to, oh, a double hit called on Jessica Dominiac. Wow. Trying to set up Sonara Martins. It's now 21-20. It's really tight, the calls. They're, he's very, very tight with it. Jump served by Brooke Vandenberg. Jankowski digs it out. Dominiac setting up Miller on the right side. And Jessica Milley hammered it. Miller, I should say, hammered it right at the feet of Christy Stewie. Now, Reem's an aggressive server. And we'll see if IPFW scores some points off her. Jump serve by the sophomore. Dug out by Hilly. Lopez gets the point. This is good volleyball right now. It's strength against strength. Teams are executing. 22-21. Maddie Johnson, the sophomore setter to serve for the Lady Bison. 
Dominiak. Oh, yeah, that has to be called. And we're tied at 22. What a comeback. It was 20 to 12 at one point. IPFW in this fourth game. Give North Dakota State credit. Top of the net. Not, and Parker! He got away with it that time. Eric that Kinderstein. almost looked like that was the same thing, but he, he didn't call it. Don's up by one, 23-22. Miller with the serve. Hilly, Jankowski digs it. Dominiak left side, Martins. Nice dig by Johnson. Sheridan, Schwartz digs it out. Dominiak, oh! Jessica Dominiak went to, to the attack. Fagan couldn't dig it out clean. That was the right time to do that because she was going to have a very difficult time setting that ball, and she knew she had an open spot on the court. Service ace for Miller. The good ball just floated over. There comes the timeout. That's the final timeout called by North Dakota State. 25-22 IPFW. Okay, Mark gets to put the coach's hat on. What's the strategy now for well, North Dakota State? North Dakota State was in a really good position there, and they got a couple of, well, I mean, everybody's playing well. But then letting that, that ace drop, that serve drop for an ace, they just didn't play it. They thought it was going out, and none of the back row played it. That was a mental error. It's a, you know, sometimes you'll get beat physically. The other team will put, make a great play. You just take your hats off, salute them, and go on. But when you make a mental mistake, when you're up against it like the North Dakota State is now, those things really hurt. So we'll see what happens here. North Dakota State has to come out. They really need to score two straight points. Mm -hmm. And actually, they need to side out and then score two real points to get out of the disadvantage that they're in. Because remember that if you're down by one and the other team has the ball, you could be down by two in a hurry. Miller, deep serve. Dug out by Lopez. Here's Stewie, a dink shot. Nice placement by Christy Stewie. And this, this side out is important, uh, or this point is important for North Dakota State because they're down by two, and they, they get it here. They're still down by one, but then IPFW can side out and go up by two. So they've got to score two real points here and prevent IPFW from scoring any real points. Kelly Lopez, little jump serve. Dominiac setting up Terrence Parker. By real points, I mean Mike under the old scoring system when you're right. when you're serving. Yep. You score them defensively rather than offensively. 26-23, Sonara Martins to serve for IPFW. Going from right to left on your TV screen. Stewie, yes. <laughs> A little short set by Johnson. Yeah, that was <laughs> Stewie. Did a nice job to find the knowing that the deep court was open to get it back there. That is her tenth kill of the night. Kerry Fagnan serving from the back end. Dominiac setting up. Parker, that's uh, dug out by Lopez. Vandenberg gets the top of the net. Acevedo all. Oh. Almost a good save by Patty Acevedo, but Dominiac couldn't come up with it. Now North Dakota State has one of them. They have to get another. Serving for the tie. Harry Fagnan from North Dakota State. Martins digs it. Dominiac sets it. Acevedo hits it. Lopez digs it. Vandenberg, did Martins oh, touch it? Touch there at the net. No, no touch called. Looked like a touch to me. Wow. I'll go along with Coach Hinterstocker there because it looked like a touch to me. But no one else saw it. At least this wearing a white shirt. That's true. Well, Don's up by two. Hilly off the touch. And it's 27-26. Lady Bison once again will serve for a tie. And it'll be Christy Stewie. Six-two senior. Off the hand of Simon. Now North Dakota State has themselves in a situation where they, they they're not going to lose. They still have to be aggressive to win, but at least they prevented themselves from losing unless they allow IPFW to score defensively. 27 all. Misplay by the Dons on the serve. 
This is reminding me a little bit of uh, the match that IPFW had a couple weeks ago in the Invitational against Chicago State when they were up 19-12 in game three and lost 30-28. to Another serve by Stewie. Dominiak setting up Schlinwein. Oh, the Dons get the break. Hilly's block attempt at the top of the net and went backwards. And now we're tied at 28. And it's what team can win two points in a row. Jessica Dominiak, the left-handed setter, will serve for IPFW. Schlinwein, yes! North Dakota State couldn't react in time. And yeah. it's match point. And it was on the serve again. IPFW strength on the serve. Match point for IPFW. He's, he's got five passers back there. Here we go. Johnson for Hilly. Miller with a dig. The Miniac setting up Martins. And that's dug out by Stewie. Vandenberg, nice dig by Jankowski. Right side to Miller. Off the touch, yes! The Dons hang on, win this game and win this match. Final score, game four, 30 to 28. And the Dons win the match, three games to one. And I have a feeling, Mark, that these two teams are gonna see each other again back on this floor if both qualify for the Summit League Championships in November. Why, top I four that, teams. Top four teams. Top four teams are come here. Well, it's been a heck of a rivalry, and we had another good one tonight. It really was. The players congratulating each other on well-deserved efforts. We'll take a quick timeout, come back in, and give you some numbers and final thoughts. Again, IPFW wins the match three games to one. Time for a break. This is IPFW Women's Volleyball on CATV. What is this? Capsicum anum, agaricus bisporus, huh? <gasps> allium sepa. Can we eat it? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as 3 million children and adults are living with type 1 diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Everybody to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW, where tonight the IPFW women's volleyball team recorded their first victory in Summit League competition as they defeated the Lady Bison of North Dakota State by scores of 30 to 24, or I should say 24 30, 30 27, 30 25, and 30 28. Mark Franke, the Dons lost game one, but they rallied, and as you mentioned, they became aggressive in games two and carried it on in games three and four. Right, the key was IPFW was not playing to their strengths. Uh, IPFW's strength traditionally, and, and this season as well, has been strong serving that creates uh, defensive opportunities. North Dakota State had excellent ball handling early, 
and again late as they made that rally, keeping the ball alive, always giving the next player to handle the ball a chance to do something with it. And that's what brought them back. But IPFW was able to stay within the system. They were able to run their offense. Their ball handling was good. And at the end, uh, North Dakota State just fell short. But it was one heck of a match. It got tense there at the end of the fourth set. Now, as you said, IPFW led 20 to 12 in game four. And the next thing you know, North Dakota State is leading 28-27 with a serve. And uh, we, get, we just got the final numbers handed to us. I guess perseverance by IPFW, they withstood the challenge of North Dakota State. And as you mentioned, this is becoming quite a rivalry between these two teams, the two of the three newest members of the Summit League. That's right. IPFW had 12 service aces against 15 errors, which is very good percentage. What we don't get out of the official stats is how good the other serves were. They're typically charted on a scale of, of uh, usually 0 to 4. So that, that was a big difference. Um, IPFW's offense was much better at the end than it was earlier. But uh, North Dakota State had a good offense throughout the night. And as long as they were, were maintaining in system, meaning the pass was reasonably good, they had a good distribution, strong play out of Lopez and Vandenberg particularly. It was just a heck of a night. Real briefly, here are some of the final numbers. Kills favored IPFW 70-53. to Assists 65-52 in favor of the Dons. Digs 87-79 in favor of North Dakota State. Uh, service aces 12 to 4 in favor of IPFW. Uh, they also led in service errors 15 to 5, which is a not so good number. Uh, team blocks favored North Dakota State 9 to 8. Real briefly, Sonara Martins with 18 kills, Jessica Miller 13, and Rebecca Ream with 11 for IPFW. And Kelly Lopez with 17, Brooke Vandenberg with 16, and Christy Stewie with 10 kills, leading the way for North Dakota State. Jessica Dominiak, 47 assists from the center position for IPFW. Maddie Johnson, 46 assists for North Dakota State. Uh, and the digs department, real quickly, um, the digs from uh, IPFW led by Peachy Jankowski with 19, Jamie Schwartz, 13, and 11 apiece for Miller and Christine Simon. And North Dakota State, 22 digs from Kelly Lopez, 20 Maddie Johnson, 17 from Stewie, and 15 from Kerry Fagnan. But... Uh, Final thoughts on this match tonight, Mark, because it was a great one. It was a great one, and I think it'll be very interesting if these two teams meet again in postseason and uh, the rivalry will continue. But both, both, both teams have to uh, now uh, continue winning to address this South Dakota State, uh, which is leading the conference. Well, that's just about going to do it. With the win, IPFW improves to 7-6, and 1-2 and two in the conference. North Dakota State drops to 10-4 and four overall, 2-2 two and two in the Summit League. And uh, that's basically going to do it. Mark, thanks so much for being with us. At this time, we want to thank the CATV production crew, the IPFW athletic staff, the city of Fort Wayne, Comcast Cable Vision, and especially the IPFW Office of University Relations and Communications for their contributions to this College Access Television Sports Telecast. This telecast of IPFW Sports is copyrighted and is the sole property of the College Access Television and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this event without expressed written consent is strictly prohibited. We hope you've enjoyed this telecast of IPFW Sports, and we thank you again for joining us tonight. For Mike, Mark Franke, rather, this is Mike Moss saying so long for now. Again, IPFW wins this match against North Dakota State. Scores were 24-30, 30-27, 30-25, and 30-28. Our next telecast of IPFW Women's Volleyball will be on October 6th when the Dons take on the Jaguars of IUPUI. But until then, thanks for tuning in, and uh, good night now from the Hilliard Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW.